Hi, this is Anna. We're on Unit 14 still, and we're going to be looking at the second part um, where we're going to focus in a little bit more on the ovary. All right, so here we are looking at an ovary, and um, this particular mode ovary, um, so it's a line drawing, but we also have some really nice models um, that represent the same type of thing. What's cool about this ovary is that it's showing all stages of development all at once. This isn't what you would normally see in a human. Um, you, you would not see every single one of these follicles develop this way. You would in a cat or something that litters and can have um, gestations at different or litter gestations that aren't all from the same day so that um, some eggs are released later. So you can kind of think of this as the classic cat ovary histology slide. Okay. So when we're looking at this, the first thing I want you to notice is, oops, let me get my pen, is the capsule right there, okay? And then all of this stuff in here that looks like this is the stroma, okay? So that's going to be like a reticular connective tissue. Then all lined up along the walls, you have these things that kind of look to me like caviar, all right? So like fish eggs, but not like cartilage fish eggs, okay? So they're all these like little beads, these little pearls up on the edge. We call these the primordial follicles, and they are gonna be lined with a simple squamous epithelium, and they have a primary oocyte in them, okay? All of these primordial follicles were created in the fetus, okay? So you are, if you are a female, you are born with all your primordial follicles with all their primary oocytes, um, done, completed. You don't make any more, okay? Now, this can be a little confusing, what I'm about to say. When we try to teach this, we teach it in a very linear fashion where it goes from primordial to primary to secondary, okay? But technically, technically, all right, Primordial follicles begin to transition into primary follicles several months before they get used, okay? So you just need to remember that, okay? Even though when we talk about the standard ovarian cycle, we're going to start with primordial to primary to secondary, okay? Because it's a lot easier to understand that way. But you've got to remember that technically speaking, all primary follicles were created, the ones that are going to you know, go through the process of an ovarian cycle several months before they're actually used. Okay, And what transitions the primordial to primary is follicle stimulating hormone that comes from your anterior pituitary gland when it is told by the hypothalamus to secrete follicle stimulating hormone. That follicle stimulating hormone is going to come in and it's going to push these primordial follicles to become primary follicles, okay? That follicle stimulating hormone, when it dis picks, it, it doesn't like consciously pick, but basically kind of think of it as five or six primary follicles get picked every month to go on to the next stage, okay? That follicle stimulating hormone is going to push them to the secondary follicle stage, now, primary follicles have simple cuboidal epithelium, okay? And that simple cuboidal epithelium, so once it changes its shape from squamous to cubo cuboidal, that means the estrogen factory is working, okay? Those cuboidal cells are going to start secreting estrogen. That estrogen production is what shuts down menses, okay? So when your period stops, it's because there's sufficient amount of estrogen to stop that process, okay? Now, the primary follicle still has a primary oocyte, okay? Now, what you're gonna notice is the secondary follicle, we have an early stage and we have a late stage. Secondary follicles will always have stratified cuboidal epithelium, and in fact, they are my favorite structure to use as an example of what stratified cuboidal epithelium looks like, okay? So here you've got the oocyte here, and you've got the oocyte here, okay? 
and you've got all the cuboidal cells here and here. Now, when you've got a single row, we call them also follicular cells. And once they go into multiple cells, we, um, we change the name, okay? And we start calling them granulosa cells, okay? That secondary follicle, you start to see the development of the antrum right here and here, okay? Now, what's gonna push the secondary follicle into the graphian or vesicular stage, okay, is going to be the quantity of estrogen that's present. You need a lot of estrogen to push from this to this. Now notice you've got a very humongous antrum full of fluid, okay? You now have a secondary oocyte, so you have finished meiosis one and you are now in meiosis two, but you haven't completed it. You have a very distinctive corona radiata of granulosa cells. Um, and just think about how many cuboidal cells are in here now secreting estrogen. Just insane quantity of estrogen is being secreted. And that estrogen is important because when it hits a peak level, the pituitary gland is going to dump all of the luteinizing hormone it's been saving up all at once and you're going to get this huge surge of luteinizing hormone that causes that graphian follicle to pop like a blister and the secondary oocyte falls into the pelvic cavity along with the fluid now when you hear about women saying they can tell they are ovulating because of a cramping feeling that is this tearing of the oocyte and then the fluid falling into the pelvic cavity, both of those events create um, a cramping feeling, okay? Now, luteinizing hormone is what's gonna push this follicle to the next stage of functioning, okay? So luteinizing hormone does two things. One, it causes the rupture for ovulation, and two, it transitions that graphene follicle into the corpus luteum, okay? So the luteal body. So corpus means body. Luteum is referring to luteinizing hormone. And this thing right here is now going to focus on progesterone production. So these follicles were all focusing on estrogen, okay? The corpus luteum focuses on progesterone. It still secretes estrogen, okay? But it's primary hormone is going to be progesterone, and progesterone is what's going to be driving the second half of the ovarian cycle, okay? Now, if fertilization doesn't occur, all right, this follicle is going to start degrading after about a week, okay? It takes another week for the progesterone levels to crash and bottom out, and when it does that, this thing basically dies, and it transitions to what we call the corpus albicans or the white body. It also stains a slight pink depending on what kind of stain you're using. This is scar tissue, okay? All right, so those are the basic things you should be able to describe and explain on this model. You want to know the names of all of these things, what stage of meiosis they are in, and what the hormones are doing to drive this. So you want to be able to ID, you want to know the meiosis stage, and you want to know what the hormones are doing for that ovarian cycle and how they are driving the different stages of these follicles. Okay, next slide. Okay, so it can be hard to remember all of these different things. Okay, so I want you to take all the information that I have here where I've talked about the various characteristics whether you're dealing with a primary oocyte or a secondary, um, excuse me, secondary follicle with a secondary oocyte, um, and, and what all you're working with, okay? Um, and then, so like, see, primary, this, this can be a little confusing because the, the naming of the follicles is, is, is not great. So the primary oocyte, excuse me, the primary follicle has a primary oocyte, all right? Now, this is the part that's confusing. The secondary follicle has a primary oocyte, okay? The transition from secondary to graphian is where you see the movement to the secondary oocyte where it finishes meiosis one and you get meiosis two stage, okay? 
This will not complete meiosis II unless it is fertilized. Okay, fertilized. That is the only time you complete that. Okay, so here are the descriptions of the follicles, and it's telling you what stage of oocyte development you're looking at. Okay, um, one thing with the primary is you'll notice right here I've got two plus layers of follicular cells. Okay, this can be confusing. Okay, because in the really early stage, it might look like one to one and a half rows. Okay, but usually you can see some corner where you're starting to get um, a second row of cuboidal cells developing. But um, if you see one row, don't worry about it. Okay, just remember if, if you don't have a whole lot to look at, it's a primary follicle. Okay, if you've got several rows that are really distinctive, okay, and you're starting to see the formation of the corona radiata, that's when you've got that secondary follicle, okay? I will never give you a picture where it's ambiguous, where it's between the two stages. I will make sure that it is distinctly looking like primary or secondary or graphian, okay? So next slide. Okay, so here we are looking at this primordial follicle where we have a primary oocyte that's been arrested in prophase one in the fetus. Now what I want you to notice is this follicle, this is really zoomed in tight so that you can see how thin the simple squamous epithelium is. And it's simple squamous because it's just creating a case to hold that oocyte. That's all it's doing. It's, it's in a, in a um, paused state. Okay? All right, next slide. All right, so here we are looking at a primary follicle over here. Now, I've put the primordial follicle here so that you can really compare the simple squamous epithelium to the simple cuboidal epithelium. And this slide is nice because you can see like over here on this one side because of the way it's been cut or maybe because it's still very early stages, that looks like simple cuboidal. But over here you can see that it is stratified cuboidal. Now if all of it looked like that, it would still be considered a primary follicle because the cells are cuboidal in shape not squamous, okay? It's also larger. So you can see the oocyte is quite a bit bigger, okay, then, and it, it would help if these were at the same magnification. But this is much, the, this is much larger than the primordials, which look like little, little tiny seed pearls um, on the edge of the ovary, okay? All right, so here we are looking at a secondary follicle. If we had these all lined up to, against each other, you would see that this is quite a bit larger, okay? Here you can see the stratified cuboidal and you got lots and lots of cells with so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, like 10 to 12 rows of cells there. You can see the development of the antrum. It's still fairly small, which helps you identify this as a secondary follicle. You can see the corona radiata right here with the granulosa cells all surrounding it. And um, you can see the primary, uh, the primary oocyte right there, okay? Ooh, that should say right there, that's wrong. That should say primary, I need to fix that, oops. Okay, so that's a primary oocyte still. Um, yeah, why do I have that there? Um, so there I've got it labeled it correctly. I have to go back and change that, um, but at least I noticed it. Okay, um, now, depending on what book you are using, there are different names for these, and this can be really confusing. I've tried to simplify it so that you don't have too much to remember, but if you are using um, the new Saladin book or the APR, you will sometimes see these referred to as tertiary follicles, okay? Um, and this is actually, I think this has been fixed in APR, um, as of like three weeks ago, um, and I probably need to go in and double check that, but just make sure that the labeling is correct when you look at it. Um, but I think it is corrected now, and I just need to go and fix this slide. All right, so here is a really nice classic graphene follicle, which again, it's A and P, we gotta have multiple names. So sometimes it's called a vesicular follicle and sometimes it's called a mature follicle, okay? You can see over here, 
tremendous quantities of stratified cuboidal epithelium, just tremendous, okay? You have a really distinctive secondary oocyte with a clear zona pellucida around it. That's basically kind of the shell that goes around it. You can see the corona right there and a huge antrum filled with fluids, okay? All right, so here's a picture I took to show you what that corpus luteum can look like. Um, it is really pretty large, even if you aren't pregnant. When you become pregnant, it can like dominate the entire ovary until the placenta takes over the progesterone production. What you're gonna notice is over here, you can see the stroma of the ovary, and you can see how the texture is different and the staining is different. So here you can see the granulosa cells, all right? And then you got a little bit of a fluid-filled cavity in here where it's staining a little bit lighter. And of course, the dominant hormone is gonna be progesterone plus a little bit of estrogen, okay? And by little, I just mean in comparison to how much progesterone there is there, okay? But what you wanna do is focus on this color change and the textural change when you want to um, identify that let me write that so you can actually read read it so texture and stain is what helps you identify that corpus luteum all right let's go to the last slide okay so here we've got the corpus albicans now depending on the stain that's used it'll either be a whitish color okay or it'll be a pinkish color okay um, and I pulled this one from the um, APR I believe so here you can see the stroma, all right? And here you can see the scar tissue, okay? So this is a fibrous connective tissue. Um, and so it's not gonna absorb the same, same way. It's gonna be very smooth, all right? Um, you're not gonna see a lot of cells in there, okay? And it'll continue to kind of shrivel and become smaller and smaller as the body kind of remodels it a little bit. Um, but it doesn't really go away, um, but you know, you, you'll be able, it looks really, it looks kind of, to me, glassy compared to the rest of the stroma. All right, so that was the last slide on part two of the ovary. And so you've got your, you can stop here now and you can go on and watch the next lecture.